In this lesson, we're going to talk about tariffs, what they are, and how they affect the international trade uh, market. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a simple example, and we'll just build from there. So we're going to start first off So the simple example. is one where the country imposing the tariff bears the full effect of the tariff. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to start with just a really simple example where the country only affects the domestic market and it has no effect on the international markets. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's just get into it a little bit. So first off, we should define what a tariff is. So a tariff is a tax on imports. Okay, so this is a tax on any good that is imported. So if we have a tariff, uh, to return to our wine example from a previous lesson, uh, if we have a, a tariff on French wine, American producers of wine do not have to pay that tariff because to sell in America because they are domestic. They don't have to actually import the wine into America. <clears throat> but the French producers they do have to put to pay that tariff. So this is a tax only on the imports. Okay. Now, typically, tariffs are set to be a certain percentage uh, of of the final price of the good. Okay. Uh, much like your sales tax. So you can think of a tariff as a sales tax on imports. Okay. Uh, in practice, or in principle, there's no difference between a sales tax or a a, a percentage uh, tariff or a per unit tariff. Uh, where in this case a per unit tariff means that we add a certain number of dollars to the price of imported goods, <coughs> excuse me, of imported goods. So we're going to just do uh, the simple version, which is the per unit tariff, but the same uh, analysis applies to a, a percentage tariff as well. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's start uh, with just a, you know, a simple graph or simple market. Demand and supply, we have price, and we have the quantity. Okay, and let's just ha say that we have a world price. We'll put it right there. And this gets us a domestic quantity demand and a domestic quantity supply. Okay, and so imports, as always, as they were last time, imports uh, pre tariff are going to be equal to QD minus QS. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's pretend that we add in a tariff. Okay. What the tariff is going to do is it's going to raise the world price, but it's not going to affect the supply or demand curves. So all we do is we increase the world price <clears throat> in this domestic market by the amount of the tariff. Okay, and we just say the same things here. So I'll call these QDT and QST. Okay, and so imports after tariff are going to be equal to QDT minus QST. Okay, and the amount of the tariff. is going to be equal to the difference between the after tariff price and the before tariff price. So it's going to be equal to PWT minus PW. That should be lowercase t. <clears throat> okay. So what we've got is the increase in the price due to the tariff. We have a decrease in domestic consumption because of the tariff. But we also have this increase in domestic production because of the tariff. Okay, <clears throat> and so we have three effects going on. The domestic price that people are paying is going to go up. As a result, domestic consumers will buy less, but domestic producers will produce more, 
And so what happens is predictably the number of imports goes down. So imports decrease. All right, or more formally, QD minus QS is less, oh, I'm sorry, is bigger than QDT minus QST. Okay. <clears throat> So there's a, a simple graph or, or way to view a tariff, right? It's uh, with these assumptions here, this is a 100% a uh, accurate representation. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to flip over and we're going to redraw this a little bit bigger uh, so that we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so there's the world price, quantity, price, supply, demand. And I'm going to continue using a black pen just because. Okay, I've got QD, I've got QS, I've got the quantity demanded after the tariff. And I've got the quantity supplied domestically after the tariff. <clears throat> so now what we're interested in are the consumer surpluses, then the producer surpluses before and after the tariffs. So we want to compare what's going on uh, in these different states of the world. So let's say we have uh, pre-tariff and we have post-tariff. Okay. And we're going to want to know the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. Okay. <clears throat> and so I'm going to label all the shapes that we see here with, uh, with letters just so we can talk about them. And I'm going to make these dashed lines solid. There we are. So we'll call this shape A. This will be B, C, D, E. F and G. Okay, these shapes are all irrelevant. They're nothing. Okay, so let's think about before the tariff, what shapes would represent the consumer surplus. So remember, consumer surplus is all the area below the demand curve and above the price that is being paid. So if there's no tariff, then domestic consumers are paying PW. So the pre tariff consumer surplus will be A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? It'll be this whole big triangle right here, okay? <clears throat> and the producer surplus, recall that that is the area above the supply curve and below the price that the producers are receiving. So if there's no tariff, they are receiving PW. So here's the price. So we want the area below that line and above the supply, and that's just going to be G. Okay. Oh, wrong box. G. Okay. Now, after the tariff, <clears throat> what happens to consumer surplus? Okay. So after the tariff, domestic consumers are paying this price up here, PWT. So we want all the area above this line and below the demand curve, so that'll be A and B. And the domestic producers, well, they're going to be able to charge this price here, and we want all the area below this price and above the supply curve, so that'll be area C and G. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the question becomes, what happens to D, E, and F? Okay. So we need, there's not going to be consumer surplus and they're not producer surplus. So what are they? So let's think about what this shape E represents. Okay, so notice that E is a rectangle of some sort, right? And on the x-axis or the q-axis here, <clears throat> well, if you think about it, it's the number of imports. So what we have are the number of imports, 
Okay, so that's the width of this box. And on the Y or the height, right, we have the tariff, right? So remember PWT minus PW is equal to the tariff. That was just uh, right here, okay? So the height of the box is equal to the tariff, the per unit tariff. So if I were to find the area of this, right, so what would be the area of this? This would be the tariff revenue, right? Let's think of it this way. If the tariff was $2, okay, so if this was, how about, uh, you know, let's say $5, and after the tariff it goes up to $7, well, that says that this height here is $2, okay? And let's say that that quantity demanded after the tariff is 200 and quantity demand or quantity supplied is only 100. Well, that means this length here is 100. And so this would be $200 of revenue. Okay. So E has to be, we're going to call it tax revenue because tariffs are just a tax. So at, before the tariff, there wasn't any, so we'll say zero, okay? After the tariff, we have tax revenue, and that would be shape E. Now, we need to think about what D and F are. And what we call those shapes, right, because their, their, their value that used to be consumer surplus, it's not been transformed into producer surplus. So remember, C used to be consumer surplus, but now it's producer surplus. So that's just a transfer of resource, a transfer of value or a transfer of resources from consumers to producers. E used to be or consumer surplus, but now it's government revenue or tax revenue. So what about DNF? They used to be consumer surplus, but now what are they? Well, it turns out they're not going to government. They're not going to producers. So we call them dead weight loss, okay? Without the tariff, there wasn't any. With the tariff, D and F are dead weight losses. Well, what these are is they represent losses to society in, in terms of value. Now, F is a fairly obvious one. F is a dead weight loss because it represented trades that would have happened if there wasn't a tariff, but now they don't because of the tariff. Okay, so F is value that is foregone simply because there are no more exchanges. Consumers are buying fewer things, right? So F is a result of, of trades that don't happen. And but what about D? These trades are still happening because remember, domestic consumers are buying all the way out to here, okay? So these trades are happening, but they're happening <clears throat> domestically instead of uh, internationally. So these are losses to society caused by less efficient producers producing things. So in this industry or this market that we're showing, it happens to be the case that America does not have, or whatever country this is rather, uh, it happens to be the case that this country does not have a comparative advantage in producing whatever this product is. What that says is that some other country does have a comparative advantage. And, we, and if we wanna maximize gains from trade, we should follow these things and let the people that have a comparative advantage produce those things. So what we've got here, are people that don't have a comparative advantage producing things instead of someone else. It'd be like me producing, you know, a car, right? Could I do it? You know, yes, I could, but it would take far more resources to have me produce cars than it would to let Ford Motor Company do it, okay? <clears throat> and so D here is a deadweight loss because we have producers producing things that they're not quite as good at as someone else in the world, okay? so. As a result of the tariff, we end up having tax revenue, and we have two shapes of deadweight loss.